back and found that I was shorthanded. I thought about Turk and forced my train of thought elsewhere. It was a big train. I waited till I got to the top of one of the ridges to tell Ruby to send Ferg out to the Esper place. She reminded me that I hadn't taken my sweatpants and Vic's feelings were probably clear. Is she there? Talking on the phone with Cheyenne. Is early? Well, tell her that the evidence stuff is on my desk and she's already got that. Oh. I waited for a moment, but she didn't continue. Anything you need from me? Like where you are? Yep, like that. No, we don't care. I thought I heard someone laughing in the background, but I wasn't sure. Palace Omar was made of logs, same as mine, but that was where the likeness ended. Unlike Vani's, he had to park in a circular holding area after being buzzed through the gate, which was about a mile back down the asphalt road. No one said anything, but the gate had slowly risen, and I smiled and waved at the little black video camera. I looked up at the house and wondered how many cameras were on the now. The place was impressive, as multi-million dollar mansions go. The architects from Montana had used a combination of massive hand-hewn logs and architectural salvage to produce a combination of old and new and all expensive. I knocked and made faces at the security camera at the door, but no one answered. Entering Omar's house unannounced was less than appealing, but I could hear a television glaring in the depths of the structure and decided to risk it. I pushed open the doors, listened to the satisfied thump as the metal cores closed, and walked into the two-story atrium that made up the entryway. I counted the mounted heads that were hung down the great hallway to the kitchen in the back. There were 23. I knew the inside of the house pretty well. I had followed Omar and Myra through the majority of it while listening to their running psychosis-ridden monologues on how they were going to kill each other. As I made my way toward the kitchen, the sound from the TV became more distinct, and I was pretty sure some pretty dramatic lovemaking was going on. Obviously, Omar got a lot better reception than I did. When I got there, Jay Sherrill, Omar's head wrangler, 